Uh, at, the, at that time, there was an old Lyric Theater, which was behind the Dykes Pharmacy, which is uh, behind now uh, the Radio Shack. And it was dilapidated, and it was owned by the Madge and Van Anderson family. We visited with that family, and they, it's where the shirt stop is right now. And uh, it was just a blighted type building, unfortunately, but it was a very useful building in its time. And a lot of you people out there who can remember going to the Lyric Theater when you were small children back in the maybe 40s and 50s, would remember that theater. Well, that theater unfortunately had to be taken down. Uh, it, was, it was pretty much abandoned by the Anderson family, and it was taken down as part of this project. The Anderson family paid for its removal. We were able to secure a very good price for them with a contractor that was doing the demolition of the Anona building at the time. So this, this project, uh, in this particular block where the city office and the and the cemetery, is, uh, excuse me, the library is located, came about as the first project. And it was a great project. And I might tell you, the business community, uh, to match the $250,000 in a, in a three block area, both sides of the three block area, from, uh, fr from first north, I gotta get this right, from second north to center street, and a little bit south of center street, came up with $70,000 just from the business community apart and aside from the money that was available through the redevelopment agency. So the business community, they came up with the money, they bellied up the bar, so to speak, to help the city end this endeavor to improve Main Street. Now the next project after that was over where the Christensen store is in the back of that store where Zion's Bank is. There used to be an old National Guard and Army there. That was torn down, that was removed. The city, uh, through the redevelopment agency, purchased the old Bradshaw building for $75,000. And so there used to be a car agency there as well. I think it was owned by the Jukes family way back in the 50s and 60s. And uh, that, build, that block then was restored. And the next project after that, after that is the city got with the school district and Zions Bank. After the Zions Bank building was built, and where it is now, and west of the Zions Bank, you see that improved parking lot over at the Ashman School. That used to be a parking lot that was just not utilized very well. It was not improved, it was very old. The school district and the city got together and decided, look, let's go 50-50 on that, using 50% from the redevelopment agency and the school district, you pay the other 50%. And what we'll do is it'll be available for teachers year round because the teachers, of course, come at 7.30, 8 in the morning. The shoppers aren't there by then. Um, there a second. So it really worked out well. If you, you can see that beautiful parking lot at the school district offices at the Ashman School. Uh, you know, the next project then was where the old scenic Utah motel was, right across from the city office. Garking Energy was uh, on the uh, east side, and the Young Block building was on the, on the west side of that project. And if you, pe you people will remember, all you residents out there and, and, and visitors Richfield and surrounding area will remember, that was a beautiful motel in the 30s and 40s. In fact, I have some beautiful pictures that the city has that uh, would show that motel. And uh, it was uh, finally bought by Richfield City Redevelopment Agency. And uh, if you will uh, look behind the young block now, that project was done with redevelopment funds as well. One of the things I probably haven't mentioned yet is what the city did is every time we, ex we, we spent redevelopment funds, we would go to the Community Impact Board and get matching funds. So the matching grant program from the Community Impact Board, which is mineral lease funds from our county, that goes back to the federal government, comes back to the state of Utah, are then loaned for projects like this, for economic development and impacted areas from the mineral extractions. And uh, so Richfield City has taken advantage, in my view, very much so of the Community Impact Board to be able to match those, match those funds with redevelopment agency funds so we can even do more projects. After that project was completed, Richfield City then embarked on the project uh, just behind Gary Shoes and Brown Shoe and Boot Store. Um, Larson's Ace Hardware at one time was located there. Christie's Market, way back in the 50s and 60s, was there as well. Uh, a grocery store market, and I, I think some of you folks out there will remember Christie's Market. In fact, my wife worked there when she was in high school, and uh, when I met her in Cane Richfield for the first time, she was actually working there in the summer of that uh, summer of 65. 
and it was kind of a fun thing for me to go in there and see her working. But uh, that building now is no longer there. It finally became a kind of a, an eyesore and a blight in the area, and there was just a narrow, a narrow alley from uh, behind Gary Shoe store. And you, in fact, all the stores from Gary Shoe store north, I mean south, couldn't even see the light of day till about 10 a.m. because of that building was so high there. But it became a blight in that area, and the city worked with the business community. Purchased that building from Lyle Larson and uh, Lace Larson or Larson's Ace then went to the south side of the community and um, in fact they were already there and the building was vacant so the city bought that building when Larson's was 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 where they are now and Larson's was an important part of our downtown area they're an important part of our business community now where they relocated this time the back I might tell you that the store owners then also on their own. With the city's encouragement, the business community encouragement from the leaders that were involved with us, from Farrell Huntsman on down, encouraged the business community then to do their part in improving the backs of their stores. And this has occurred, and this is an important part of the downtown projects. Um, I might want to just go to the next project, it was uh, over on Block 45, and that precedes the project of Main Street. And on Block 45 is behind the Hewish Theater, behind Fashion Furniture. And by the way, Fashion Furniture is Ogden's carpet outlet now, and furniture outlet, but Fashion Furniture was an important integral part of that particular block historically. Um, the Hewish Theater was very important to that block historically as well. As were the businesses like Blake Electric and the others on the uh, south side of that block. Um, the City Council, again, uh, went to the Community Impact Board to uh, get matching funds. And I'm just now to the Main Street project that is going on currently at this time. The two projects combined, the Block 45, which was improved, and you can see from the uh, live pictures here is what that looks like, and Main Street together cost $1.8 million. Uh, with the uh, probably about a little over half, probably 900, maybe almost a million dollars in Block 45. And the reason for the disparity in the two projects in terms of maybe spending more of the money on Block 45 or perhaps maybe we should have spent more money on Main Street is because the city worked with the business community in acquiring four or five properties. There were some dilapidated buildings behind uh, uh, Blake Electric, uh, uh, those those buildings were an important part of the project in terms of tearing them down, acquiring them. There was an old tin building that had some furniture storage in it. Uh, that came down. There was an old plant back there that the last time it was used was an ice plant. And that building came down as a center lock, block building. <clears throat> By purchasing all those properties <clears throat> and the properties becoming a city parking lot, it just took more money. One of the things, though, that just as I'm talking about the Main Street project that is going on right now, let me just mention one of the most important parts of the project is the Main Street Enhancement Project. I mean, committee, excuse me, Main Street Enhancement Committee. And I talked about them, I briefly mentioned them earlier. They've probably been in existence for at least 12 to 15 years. I apologize, I don't know the exact date when they came about, but uh, the Main Street Enhancement Committee then became an important part of the Main Street development, of the actual Main Street development now. Um, in fact, it was because of that organization, which was backed by Richfield City, and later on became part of the Chamber of Commerce. In fact, they now operate under the direction of the Chamber of Commerce. And they've done that for several years now. And they are controlled strictly and solely by the Chamber of Commerce. Lorraine Gregerson is executive director of the Chamber of Commerce, and she is involved in both the Main Street Enhancement Committee and the Chamber of Commerce. And the Main Street Committee is a subcommittee underneath the Chamber of Commerce. 